I want this to be true of my life every single day. That I know something and I believe something. What do I know? What do I really know? That he loves me. Amen. How great is this love? How great is this love? I may not understand it. But do I know it? Have I experienced it? Do I want to experience his love at the greatest level possible? How much love does the Father want to bring to you in this life? Have you ever thought about that? It's, it's not enough for us to, to preach about the love of God. It's not enough for us to bring the John 3.16 promise. We were made for more than that. We were made for more than that. We were made for more it's not, it's not a word that describes something you have in your head. It's something that you know by experience. It's the same word that is used to describe the love between a husband and a wife. That because the man and the woman have come together and they have touched one another and they have become one flesh face to face body to body something has happened between them and there is an experience of love of intimacy there's an experience that causes the man and the woman to say, you are different with me than anyone else. And no one else knows this closeness that we have. That when we spoke our vows to one another, we set ourselves aside from everyone else to know, to know each other to, to be each other's best friend to, to, to experience something between us that no one else will ever know with me this is what John is talking about I have come to know the love that Father has for me. We have something happening. I might not even be able to describe it with words. But I have felt it. I It has touched me. this love go? How deep can it be? How much of this love is there to experience? 
ndetse ni gute twakubwo ubusabane no buryohe gukunda umwana we were made for this ndetse babwire icyo twaremwe this is the longing of your soul ndetse ni go rukundo niyo ngwa kwifuza ku mutima yawe you will never know who you really are until you have known this love you will never understand why he made you until you experience his love. You will never understand why he believes in you until you experience his love. You you will never have the confidence to live destiny without knowing this love. But I tell you the truth. This is how Jesus lived every day on the earth. He knew the love. We have come to know and we have come to believe. This word believe it really is the word for expect. I don't just believe that God has love for me. I expect him to love me. I am waiting for him to love me. I'm confident. This love that he's been bringing into my life. The hug and the kiss that he's already brought to me. It will come to me tomorrow. No matter where I am. No matter the situation. No matter how great the difficulty, even when I fail, I expect the love. He will pick me up. He will hold me again. He will kiss me again. He will not reject me. He will keep in me. He will keep telling me that he made me for himself. He will love me tomorrow. I can tell you this. I expect it. See, I know this about my own wife. I know she loves me. I have been experienced her love for so many years. I know when I wake up tomorrow, she will be there. And I know how she will feel about me tomorrow. I expect it. You know what that does to you? It makes you secure. Oh. 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 When he has put that kind of love on you, you should know something about you. Who are you? I am loved. Why, Why are you loved? I am. Do you know The people ask Jesus, Who do you think you are? And he said, I am. 
He did not tell them what he does. He said, I am. I have been with the Father. I will always be with the Father. We are one. I am. I am not loved because of what I will do. I am not loved because I measure up to something. I'm not loved because I have become perfect. I'm loved because I am. I'm his. I was his idea. I did not exist until he thought of me. And why did he think of me? Because he wanted me. Do you know that? Has it ever gone deep into your heart? Do you know the love that he has for you? You know how he feels about you. You know the thoughts that he has for you. Woo! 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 You know when you, when you first start getting a revelation of this, it makes you want to cry. All of the pain of your rejection. All of the pain of your rejection. The pain of the people that have pushed you away. The pain of, of being lonely. And no one understanding you. His love. His love comes and it pours into that place where you are. It comes like oil into the hand. And it begins to heal you. 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 This love is a healing love. It's like medicine to the soul. And it's a medicine to the soul. It's a medicine to the soul. It's a medicine to the soul. The Apostle John tells us. We have come to know and to believe this love. He says, by this happening to us, love is perfected in us. Love is made complete in us. I want to tell you that our Father will not rest until we know all of His life. There are so many places in my heart that have been wounded and I feel like an orphan. There's so many places within my, my past experience where I, I have believed the lies that caused me to be afraid. And God wants His love to come into every place in my life. The places deep inside of me that I don't even know are there. The human heart is very deep. And the Bible says, who can know the human heart? There's so many things within us that are hidden to ourselves. But the Holy Spirit knows. The Holy Spirit knows what's going on inside of me. He knows where I'm afraid. He knows where I feel inferior. He knows where I struggle to love myself. And that's where he comes to pour the love. He wants, he wants me to become perfect in love. Not perfect in the way I live my life. The perfect in his love. 
And the Apostle John tells us that when that love is perfected in us, we begin to have a confidence that we've never had before. We begin to see ourselves in a way we've never dared to think about ourselves. Every person in this room, this is what you want. You don't want to be small. You don't want to be insignificant. You don't want to live as someone with no value. You want to be big. Not because of but you were made for this. Something, something deep inside of you knows that you were made in an image. So something in you already knows I was made for more. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. My mind is brilliant. He's given me an imagination. And I can see things. I can dream things. I see the possibilities. I see the potential. And it calls to you. Deep calling unto deep. I was made for more. This is not pride. We know that we want to be humble. God gives grace to the humble. And those who are proud, he puts down. But it is not humility for you to see yourself less than who God said you are. It is humility for you to see yourself as you really are. You don't have to be greater. You don't have to be less. I am. I and I don't have to prove it to you. Because I'm not afraid of what you think. The reason we have pride is we're afraid of what other people think about us. And so we try to pretend that we are something else. But when you know who God makes you to be, you don't need to be somebody else. You've already seen your own greatness. You've already seen the image of God in you. You already know you carry the glory. You already know that everything has been given to you. So there's nothing to prove. Amen. And nothing to defend. We said we spend so much time defending ourselves. But when you know who you are. And you believe it. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Nothing to defend. Nothing to defend. Nothing to defend. Amen. 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 Do you know how many arguments this would stop? Do you know how many arguments this would stop? Most of our conflict with other people is us defending ourselves. Because we know that we are made for more. 
even some of our preaching is trying to defend ourselves as men of God. Oh. I'm talking about me. The gift of the Spirit. The Spirit had never come on any person like this until Jesus. The, the Spirit had come on many Many men and women in the Old Testament. But it was different. When Jesus received the Spirit, he is baptized. He receives all the Spirit. Never to leave. And Jesus is the second. Yes, the first Adam can only receive measures of the Spirit. But Jesus comes as the second Adam. And he receives the Spirit without measure. He receives the Spirit as inheritance. Because he's a son. Not for what he will do. But because it is the inheritance of the Son. I want to say to you today that if you were a son and a daughter, you have an inheritance of the Spirit without measure. And we must believe this. We must expect it. That God can send you anywhere to do anything and the Spirit will be with you. And even if it looks like it's like it's a giant that you've never faced, you are not afraid. You see, God wants to give entire nations to somebody. You can't even think that way without the Spirit. If you're able, I will. Your worship will take care of you. So Jesus receives the Spirit. Yes, sir. But it doesn't stop there. While he's receiving the Spirit, something else happens. There's a voice. Oh, oh, there's a voice. Ooh. Ooh. And this voice is speaking in front of everybody. Everyone can hear it. And as Jesus is standing there, he hears the voice speaking over him. You and I were made to hear the voice. You see, sons and daughters, we have access to the voice of the Father. You don't want to live in this life without the voice. <laughs> see, the Father wants to tell us things. He wants to show us things. He wants to, to give us the family business. He wants to give you the family identity. And he needs to tell you who you are. And so Jesus hears this voice. You! You! I see you. Oh. You. Oh, yeah. Have you ever had God speak and say, You? 
ijwi kugira ngo wowe nikavuga mu izina ryawe i see you ndakubona wowe my eyes are on you amaso yanjye ari kuri wowe nakukinya ari bari yaso ndokinya na bara bari mu kureba ni bandi mu kureba you have my attention ufite ishusho ya kamera yanjye you have my affection ufite wa kamera yanjye you are the focus of my delight uri uri wakuye muri jewe you wowe Oh, but that changes your heart. If you really hear the mutima, when you know the Father sees you. Iyo akaze kumenya ko ko papa kureba. Imirebe ya rehe bichipa. There are eight billion people in the world. Hari miliyari umunani pisi zaba. But the Father knows me. Hari po papa ranzi nani? I'm not lost. Na kwa nazimi. I have not been abandoned. There are not, not there are not other people more important than me. I have my own audience of the king. Oh. Oh. going after your heart i preach you what you want because deep in our heart we do not believe that god feels that way about us if it is also ye imbere mu mutima kundi bazi mutima yacu ntujya twimura twemere kizere by'imana tuvuga we need the experience of god saying you ukenera kumva imana bitubwira umuntu kugitiki You are mine. Uru wange. Oh. <laughs> hey. You are mine. Uru wange. You belong to me. Uru wange. I want you. Ninge wakushiza hano. Ndi wakubyaye. You are my family. Urakunzwe. Uru wo mu muryango wange. You are my blood. Ura maraso yanje. You you are my DNA. Ufitemo DNA yanje. When I look at you I see myself. Iyo murebye ndibona. You are mine. Ura wange. Oh. Oh. How is Jesus feeling when he hears these words? Ese yesi ye yumva ga magambo yo byumva ati Papa. Uga ti Papa. I belong to you. Ndu wawe. <laughs> no one else may want me but you want me. Na wondi usha usha ka nje usha. Yo man. Ruwanje. You you are my son. Ruwanje. Oh. Man. You have special relationship with me. Ufitaje usawa ne gumi hari konanje. You're not just anybody that I created. Na guri mu bana gusaba ne hano mwisi. You are my son. Uruma na wanje. Oh. Everything that I have belongs to you. Ibyo mfite byose ni byawo. Yes, you are my future. No one knows how that has us. You are the expression of me in the earth. No one will ever say che mu no gachiro kwisi wange. You are my son. Wo mwana wange. Thank you. Do you think when Jesus is hearing these words that is hitting his heart? Ese wari wibwira ikintu Yesu yumva ko mutima wiyumva yabagamba. Does Jesus need to hear this as a human being? Ese umuntu Yesu yarakeneye kumva yabagamba. Absolutely. Mu byukuri dare kwiri. Is is a human flesh. Uko yari yamba imubiri wa Obama. And he needs to know these things. 
He needs to feel these things. He needs to be marked in his soul by these things. He needs to have this profound experience with the Father that will carry him into the future. Is what he will experience here in the water will give him the identity and the authority to go and do what he's called to do. You are my son. And I love you. Paul. Beka. All the people are standing around and they're listening to this. They're hearing the voice coming down from heaven. You are my son and I love you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> oh. Every person needs to hear the Father say I love you you need to hear it you need to hear it in your mind you need to hear it in your heart you need to feel it come upon you it is part of your experience you have been hugged you have been hugged, you have been held. No, no, You're receiving the kiss. the kiss from the Father. My, my earthly father never kissed me. I have no memory of my father holding me. I have memories of spankings. I have memories of my father being angry and hitting me. I, I feared my father's touch. If my father would start to get to come close to me, I was afraid. This was a scar deep in my heart. But when I began to believe in the father who made me, I had to learn something new. I don't have to be afraid of him. When, he, when he's coming to be near to me, it is not to hurt me. Not to punish me. To hold me. My father has a kiss for me. My father wants to look at me face to face eye to eye to see what is in his heart the great love that he has for me the affection that he has for me he someone can tell you that they love you Say, oh yeah, I love you. But if I reach out and I hold you and I don't let go and I kiss you no, 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 I you start to feel something. You start to feel Are we comfortable? <laughs> See, you know I love you. Because yeah, we've had many hugs. But when I'm with you, I'm 
Ya que la dice. Sí. He knows. He knows I love him. Eh, así como Cuba, David es como uno. And he believes. Cada cap. He expects. Cada día dice no va a irte Cuba. So he's not afraid of me. He does not have to go. He does not run away. No va a He lets me come close. Oh, how, close how close can we be? Oh, oh this feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for loving me. <laughs> If we can have this brother to brother, how much more their father? <laughs> But I cannot do this. <laughs> If I cannot do this. I can kiss you because he has kissed me. I know how he feels about me. I know how he feels about you. Whoa. This is how we make unity. This is what makes the church powerful. The world will know that you are my disciples. When they see the love you have for one another. This is the testimony. That our gospel is true. so happy. <laughs> so Jesus hears the Father say, you are my son, I love you. And I am pleased with you. The Father is pleased with Jesus, but he has done nothing. He said, He has done no works. He's not been a servant of God. He hasn't gone to school. He hasn't done anything. But the Father loves him. He is pleased with him. This becomes the foundation for his ministry. In the garden when men fell from their father's love, they began to perform and to earn. They began to believe the lie that, that they had to do something. They had to work. And if they, if they work hard enough, then they can have something. And if you have something, then you become something. I do so that I can have so that I can become. But it is not that way in the kingdom. You come into the kingdom. It's free. Not by your works. By grace. You become. You become a son. You become a daughter. You did nothing to do. You become. And when you begin to realize who you are, then you can know you have received what I have. He did not give it to me because I worked hard. He did not give it to me because I was good enough.
He did, he does not give it to me because I have become holy. Now the group who gonna I wear. He gave it to me. Yeah, be mine because I am. Uko uko ndi we. Why does he love me? Which I'm holding. I am. Do what you. I am his. Do my no. That's the only reason. You need have you in every man. So I become. No no have one do it. So I then I have. Have one do it. I can even get up. And now I can do. No no I can even more. I am not going and doing ministry to get anything. Have na je umurimo kuja ngiri byo mbona. I'm not working hard for the Father so that He will love me more. I'm not becoming this great servant of God so that somehow God will bless me. I serve Him because I already am. I'm sorry. I don't have to do anything. But because he loves me, I love him. And in his love, he has given me everything. I have. And with what I have, I will give it away. This is what Jesus said before he sent out the twelve. He was going to send them out to do the works of the kingdom. He said, No, you have already received everything. Freely you have received. This is the kingdom. This is ministry. I'm not doing something for God. I'm doing something from God. I and the Father are one. He's given me everything. I have an inheritance. I've received the Spirit without measure. I am rich. I can touch the world. I can give away what he's given to me. I can show the world what my father is like. I am not doing this from pressure. That I have to do something. Or God will not be happy with me. He's, he's already happy with me. I can't imagine why he's happy with me. Which is now. Because this is not normal in the world. In the world, people don't love you unless you, you measure up something. When you do what they want you to do, then they will love you. And so, so we're working hard. We're trying to be what other people want us to be. So that we can, have, we can become something. But in the kingdom of God, you receive everything. You get it first. I didn't earn it. I did nothing to, to get this. It's, it's love. It's grace. It, he's believing something. And I receive. No, no, if you want to love me like this, yes. I will let you love me. I will, I will not say that I am disqualified. I will not say that I that I do not deserve it. Here I am. I will receive it. In every word you want to speak to me, I will believe that the true things that you speak to me set me free from the lie. It takes truth to set you free from a lie. And the Father has many things he wants to tell us. 
that come from his love. And when you hear his words, they will be the opposite of what you've always heard about you. And you must choose to believe what he says to you. You may say, oh, it's too good. What he's saying to me is too good to be true. How can this be that, that he would say such positive things about me? No one has ever treated me with this kind of value. Nobody has ever wanted me like this. But you have a choice. You can push away. Or you can run to him. Run. Run to him. Run to his love. If he is giving you love today, run to him. If he wants to tell you something wonderful about you, say yes, I believe. This is who I am. I am who he says I am. another story about me. I was down in Australia. I was in a very big meeting. And there were thousands of people there. And I was on the ministry team. And, and day after day I'm watching the big speaker. I'm watching the men of God. They're teaching, preaching. They're releasing signs and wonders. It was amazing. And I was watching the men of God. my orphan heart, my orphan heart was looking. <laughs> and my orphan heart started to compare me to them. And every day in this conference, I compared myself. And I was getting smaller and smaller. And my thoughts about me were getting smaller and smaller. And they said, oh, I will never be like one of them. I want God to use me like this. But I could never be that. But I could never be that. I could never be that. I could never be that. And my emotions were so negative. No, no, but I'm negative. And I was, and I was becoming depressed about me. Because I compared myself. I judged myself. I did not have God's thoughts about me. If you have a so in that meeting one day. There was a pastor's wife. And she came up to me. And she said, I want to pray for you. And so I said, okay. I need prayer. I did not want prayer. I wanted to go feel sorry for myself. I'm so small. And so she begins to pray for me. And she, and she stops and she, she said something to me. She said, Paul, I have a vision of you. She said, I see you in the future. And you are standing on a big stage. 
And there are thousands of people. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was standing there with my eyes closed. And I could not believe her words. How can this be? That could never happen to me. I'm so small. I am nothing. And then this, this woman said to me, Paul, Paul, say yes. Say yes to the vision. Say yes to the word of God to you. Believe what he believes. And I had a choice. Do I say yes? If I say yes, I will have to let God take me into it. If I say yes to the vision, I will have to confront the lies that are in me. If I say yes to this vision, I can no longer feel sorry for myself. Because sometimes, as an orphan, we've learned how to comfort ourselves with being small. But I had a choice. And I knew it was God. And it's very much. I stretched out my hands. And I said, forget. God, if you believe this. Who am I to say no? What do I know about me? What do I know to judge myself? You are the only one. You are the one who made me. And if this is how you see me, I will not be unbelieving. I will not be ungrateful. I say, and the moment I said yes, I felt God's hand come into my head. And he reached through my head into my belly. And he pulled something dark out of me. And when it came out of me, I screamed. It was the orphan leaving. It was all the pain going out. It was all of that rejection having to go. And it was letting the power of the Spirit come in. I screamed so loud. My wife heard me. She was way on the other side of the auditorium. And she knew my voice. She said, What's happening to my husband? <laughs> Before Jesus goes out to do any ministry. <laughs> He must come to the water. He must come and be baptized. Full submission to the Father. I am yours. I have come to do your will. I only live for you. He was baptized in water. But then he was also baptized in the Spirit. To receive the power and the anointing. 
to receive his identity as one who has been given authority. I have been, I have been called. And he received the spirit without measure. But he had the third baptism. The baptism of the Father's love coming down. Amen. You I believe it. 